welcome back to the Innovators Den. I am formerly known as Hashtag on Instagram. Make sure you follow us on YouTube at the Innovators Den. And I'm here with Steve All Business. And we got a very special guest today. We got Yaniel and our special cast from a special movie called Something of Value, right? Yep, yep. You got something cool coming, everybody. You got something hot. If you want to introduce the team, the crew. That, first of all, thank you for having us here. My name is Yaniel Paulino, as you said. I'm the director of the, of the feature film Something of Value. Uh, I got Baldwin here, the cinematographer. My name is Baldwin Angeles. I'm the DP slash cinematographer. Yeah. So my name is uh, my name is Adiel Torres. I play Manny Reyes inside of Something of Value. I'm the uh, I'm the kid who goes down the wrong path, but uh, but yeah, that's that's influenced by by yeah, by my right, next by my next guy. guy. <laughs> <laughs> Robles. No doubt. So my name is Robel Luan. I'm the guy playing uh, Saulo, and I'm the dark side, the guy that's influencing this kid to go down the wrong path, but. Um, you know, uh, bad guy, but still humanized as well. Super privileged to be part of this project as well, man. So, yeah, that's awesome. Amazing. Oh, uh, Yanel, so what's up, man? We've been going through a long journey. Now you was able to put out a movie, but you know, this was uh, an experience with this movie because it started with the pandemic, and you guys right. had a lot of hardships going through that process. Yep, Can yep. you highlight that? Like, you know, from what started the movie to going through that process at right. the pandemic? Right. It was definitely, you know, a really hard time, not, you know, for the film, but, you know, to humanity as a whole. Mm -hmm. And we actually started filming two weeks prior to the whole shutdown and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And I mean, we had a crew of like 22 people, something like that, working on set. And when the whole pandemic hit and they, you know, we reopened and whatnot six months later, we had all these regulations. We had to be vaccinated. You had to make sure you had something inside on set, making sure that we were following protocols and whatnot. To top it off, we had, you know, studios and locations that they were only allowing 10 people max. And that's almost impossible for you to, you know, shoot a film because mm -hmm. just my cast alone, we had like, what, four, six at a time filming on the same day. So if you think about it, we got six actors on set, and then you got the cinematographer, you got the sound guy, you got the director, you got the script supervisor. So now what happened was that we had to kind of like wear multiple hats in order for us to, you know, finish the product and, you know, go through up, with it. Battle going um, through that. And, um, yeah. How was that, like, getting everybody back? Like, so it was it was very difficult. I mean, Adiel could talk a little bit about his um, story, unfortunately. His, um, his dad was a really good supporter of this project, and, you know, um, I guess he could talk more about it. Yeah, so, um, no, nah, my, my dad was a huge supporter of the film. You know, it was, uh, it was... It was awesome. It was like for him to see the progress that we made throughout the uh, throughout the film and stuff. We ended up losing him due due to COVID. Wow. I lost him. Uh, That's 2021. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. So it, it that shows just how much uh, how much time has passed since we started this project. And that's another thing, you know. I started this project when I when I was uh, 16. Wow. So now wow. I'm 20. I'm <laughs> I'm a sophomore in college, and this is you know it, it just shows how long it takes. Right. Especially when you meet so many hurdles like the pandemic and stuff, right. you know what I mean? It shows just like the perseverance of this entire team, right. making sure that everything comes out, you know, the way we want it, up to our standards. It's a lot, you know, a lot of people don't see what goes on behind the, right. behind right. the cameras. Right. They just see the nice shiny stuff, but, you know, I know your dad is going to be proud of what you guys did because the trailer's amazing so far. Kudos, kudos to, to Adia's mom. <laughs> she's Shout out behind, back, the behind the scenes. Behind the scenes. She's we got the director yeah. back there. <laughs> Good support throughout the whole film and, you know, what they went through and still, you know, to come out, even, you know, through the goods and bad that they were going through, they still showed up. And I, I appreciate your resilience in your crew, you know, mm -hmm, and that mm -hmm. team is like together. Everyone accomplished more. Right. Yep. You guys did that. And you guys showed that not only through the work, but also through the, the content you put together that right, right. a lot of people from where we come from mm -hmm. can't build the put a movie like that together. Right. Right. They might think about it. Right. But they don't execute it. So yeah, you it's, know, it's, we it's appreciate not, you guys, you know, really going through, you know, and going through that. Right. Know? Right. So what, what inspired you, um, Baldwin, in, in the, the cinematography stuff that, you know, your point of view, because, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, no, it was definitely a tough project from the get-go, because uh, sometimes us as DP, we like to have, like, all the toys, all the tools, and, like, this kind of film, the genre of this film, usually is not done with the budget that we had. So we were pushing, like, pushing the boundaries, like, from the get-go. Mm -hmm. Like, 
the level of budget that you need for an action ours is not action action but like it's more like thriller and sometimes like you know a few stunts we'll do that we didn't have you know we couldn't do and you know that by itself is like you know you, you usually see that in um like high budget films so the genre was not easy it was more so to be honest like the schedule sometimes because an, another thing is like we had like many actors sometimes films are like one yeah. or two actors and like we have like multiple yeah right. and so there were times where like you know my challenge as dp was we got to a location for some reason, we couldn't shoot there because maybe we're missing a guy that couldn't make it because, like, he had to cancel the last minute one of the... Or, like, the person who said okay for the location, now it's nowhere to be found. It was, like, a whole... So there was a lot of, like, like improvising going on. And, like, I personally don't like to do a lot of improvising unless it's necessary. Right. I like to have my plan set and do it because right. I put work into that in order to... it. So, so when you, like... Cut, like catch me off guard is like you gotta i do it because it needs to be done right. but then it puts it you know it, it i have to yeah. press my creativity right, like right, lighting right. and camera wise to like <laughs> to raise greater depth right. you know what i'm saying so those were one of the challenges but man like that's where like me and yaniel complement each other he's more of like you know let's do it mentality and i'm more of the guy i want to have to i want to like the a to z before i actually yeah. step out right, and right. do something you know what i'm saying so having him to to like like push us to like those moments, what's what's really good. It's been years like that, and like I think that's where we complement each other. To be honest, yeah, it shows yeah. resiliency in you guys. What inspired I, the film? What inspired the film? Basically, the film is a reflection of my personal life. To be honest, uh, my youth, my brothers, some of my friends. Of course, we dramatize the film a bit more to give it that right. edgy. You know what I'm saying? But I feel like our culture, like a lot of youngs teenagers uh, when we're in schools most of the time not most of the time but some of us uh, we get to hang out with the wrong crew well, on the block the city, I feel like that. Like if you're in I, the urban area that here in the city like you know we're from the Bronx from I'm from Harlem right. so you already know how that goes uptown the Bronx um, and oftentimes we don't listen to what our parents are telling us like hey like make sure you're hanging out with the with the right guys with the you know the right crew and whatnot. Mejor solo que mal acompañado. Yeah, <laughs> exacto. So, no daban los cocotazos as a kid. <laughs> Pero you learn, you learn from those mistakes. You get what I'm saying? So, I feel like my job as a director or my films, I would like to, you know, inspire this next generation, like bring hope, guide them, love. Because at the end of the day, if we're not doing it, like who, who else is going to do it? So, so that's like one of my, my goals with, with most of the films that I do. I'm also like, not to make it a religious thing, I'm, I'm a believer in God. And if you know all culture, like we are close, we, we, our parents son bien o cristiano, católico. Right. Um, and something that, you know, my mom uh, me puso eso ahí as a, as, as a believer. So I felt like as a teenager, I detoured from who I really was. And to see that, how many, um, the character of our film, uh, it's going through the same process. I feel like it's going to bring like some sort of, you know, switch yeah. to teenagers, not only from, you know, this, they don't necessarily need to be Latinos, but who, whatever teenager watched the film. Inner city kid. In general. Mm -hmm. They'll be impacted by, by the message. Right, right, you right. Because right. nowadays, how like, how was what? No, I was going to ask him how was casting and that process when, but you could keep going. He, he could we follow through with that. Yeah. Um, my casting experience. Yeah. Interesting. He didn't even he didn't even I show think. up to the casting. Yeah, so, so <laughs> I feel like you should take it from there and then I'll go from there. Go ahead. So how were, how with the casting with Robel? He didn't even show up to the casting. <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> no, that's that's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, so 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 Ro, with Robel. No, no, no. So so wait. So there was a script though. There was a script. Yeah. Okay. So so this is the thing. Like Robel, uh, we had I have a good relationship with Robel. And I knew the potential that he has. Like, you know, he hasn't been, like, a major feature films and whatnot. But because of the relationship we have built, like, I know who he is and I know what he could bring to the table. So his character was the only one that we couldn't cast. We tried to get a couple of people that I brought, it, brought in to read the line, to read his lines um, in front of the casting director and whatnot. And he's laughing. Yo, I, <laughs> I, I, I got I to I add on to that later. Okay. 
and uh, and so she was like, no, none of the guys that you have brought in, um, they're, make, they're not make the cut, make the cut, because you know his character is one of the most important important yeah, characters right. in the film because he's the antagonist, mm -hmm. and he's the one leading the whole gang. So whoever you bring in, you gotta make sure that they're gonna deliver. So I'm like, yo, I got this guy, but this guy sometimes he he'll show up or he won't. So it's one of those dude. So what we did. He didn't show up to the casting because, of course, um, he was not on the radar at that time. We did the table read, and I was like, I was like yo, Robel, I need, you, I need you to come to the table read. Uh, we had actors flying in from Miami, from Mexico, and we, didn't, we hadn't filled in that character yet. He came in, he read the character, he read the lines. Um, that day we, read, we went through the whole um, script, mm -hmm. like 90-something pages with all the actors and everybody. And the casting director was like, yo, this is your solo. And I'm like, yo, oh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but I would like for him to talk about a little bit of what, you know, he was going through and how yeah, he... Your experience on, through the process. Yeah, it's, it's amazing to see because I wasn't aware of the process of everything that they were going through in the casting. I wasn't aware of any of that. But uh, it's just a testament to how you want to surround yourself around people that a lot of times see what you don't see at the moment. You know what I mean? I was, you know, that's life. It's like a heartbeat. It goes up, it goes down. And at that particular moment, the heartbeat was, you couldn't, you couldn't hear it. It was a hard time. And I had a lot of self-doubt in my personal life and what, what I was going through. And of course, that reflected on my career acting. And... It's so crazy, man, because usually when they say that you don't, you come up with every, any excuse not to go somewhere and you just show up, some things happen. You know what I mean? Right. Mm -hmm. And I was literally coming up with excuses because I didn't believe I, I was going to be able to do it. I, I, was, I had that self-doubt that I was dealing with. And literally hours, a couple hours before going there, I was coming up with excuses. Oh, I'm just going to say this. I'm not feeling well, this, this and that. And I said, you know what? I'm just going to go. I'm just going to show up, you know, just going to show up. And the rest is history. You know, my thing is just surround yourself around people that believe in you, even when you don't. Right. And that's just going to drive you to, you know, your purpose, man. You know, so you had somebody on your side that that saw that already in you. That's right. And he was like, That's right. wait, I know you could do it, but I need you to come through for me, though, right now. Right. <laughs> you know, I need you to come I need, through right I now. I need you me. to believe it because that's right. the other thing. If you don't believe it yourself, yeah. Yeah. I have moments when I know, okay, I know I can deliver. And just like that, if your mindset is not right, mm -hmm. you, if you don't believe it yourself, right. you won't be able to deliver that day. That's you know what I mean? The hardest thing is literally just that's making the hard it there. That's just the show hard. up. It's just getting and, up. The but hardest but thing you, is showing up. But Once you, you were show 16 up, when this started, so yeah. how was it for you? Yeah. Yo, I wanted to add on to this. All right, so now nah, because I've been wanting to add to a whole bunch of things. <laughs> Yo, come, come to a casting. You, you're gonna be an actor. You're gonna be a Hollywood. Like, nah, let me explain this. Let me explain this because because Janiel said something that's uh that's like really important. He said, all right. He said that they cast it for Salo and they couldn't get it, right? So there's a funny story, all right? So there was a miscommunication at first, okay? There was a miscommunication. Somebody had told me, okay, nah, you're, like, you're going to audition for the movie, right? You're going to do, you're, you're gonna do the casting. And your character, his name is Saulo. He's the kid who does this. So they described my role. Like they said, oh, he's the kid who goes, on, who goes down the wrong direction and stuff. And his name is Saulo. Right? Okay, I was like, word? All right, say less. So when they hand me the, the, like, the script for the, for the casting, I'm over here reading Saulo's lines. I'm like, man, this ain't a kid. Like, like yo, like, he, like he's bro. acting gangster for what? <laughs> right? Act. He's 16? Yeah, I'm like, bro, I, like, come on now. Like, this is, this is, like, he was talking, I forget which scene it is. I really do. But it was like, he was, you know, he was, oh, it was when he was telling, um, telling one of the, one of the, one of the members to, like, go somewhere and, and do a, you know, do a little action, you know what I mean? Okay, so I'm over here acting it out. I go in there. Janiel is on, is, is on the table. I'm over there. I'm like, oh, my God. I'm reading the solo lines, right? And I finish the casting. I'm like, man, this ain't me. Like, like, this, isn't who I, like this isn't who I auditioned for, right? And then Janiel goes, and he goes, yo, read Manny's lines. 
<laughs> I was like, like when he walked oh, in, oh, this I'm is like, the character. Walked, I'm like, yo, this, this kid is not going to be yeah, solid. Yo. <laughs> not on my film. Not on my film. Yeah, for real. So I, he was like, yo, read Manny's lines. I'm like, oh, yo, this is the character because they, they just told me the wrong name. So I, I auditioned for his, for, for his, for his role. Yeah, yeah that was hilarious. Thing. Absolutely no, hilarious. And he memorized the whole line. Knowing, yeah. the, and, <laughs> knowing the beautiful thing about that story well, is you that. You probably could also tell him his lines before it'd be. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> knowing the, be the beautiful thing about that story was that although he got ready for a different role, when he, we gave him the, um, the Manny role right there and then, and he just, he, was, he went like, oh, give me two minutes. I mean, when he read it, and bam, 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 he knocked it out of the ballpark. Yeah, but he wanted it, you know what I'm saying? So that shows a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, your dad was there supporting, so it's like, yeah. hey, I got to do this, you know? Of course. Right. That's what's up, man. This is, up. Yeah, this yeah, is dope. 100%, 100%. Dope. So what was the, like, most biggest challenge for all of you guys beyond the, the COVID? To, to me, the biggest cha challenge, to be honest, because of COVID, getting everybody back on track, like getting all the actors, so... Was there like a... There was a lot of actors going through anxiety. Myself as a director, I was going through a lot of anxiety um, for the first time in my life. I mean, if you think about it, when all this went down, I fe felt like I was at the peak of my career. And I felt like a god, to be honest. I felt like unstoppable. I was calling the shots. We were flying actors from Mexico, actors from Florida. You know, you need a budget to, to be able to house these people. Right. And... and I felt, I felt unstoppable. So when the whole shutdown happened, I went through a, through a six month period of anxiety, depression, cause I'm the kind of guy like I, I had to keep moving. So I was stuck in the house doing nothing that messed me up mentally. Yeah. So coming back out of that, I had to kind of like, okay, how do I come back out of this? How, you know, we bring everybody back on track to the same mindset. And it was not easy. You guys did, did you guys started Stay communicating focused. on Zoom to like work rehearse and stuff like that? One of the best line producers I've work, worked with so far and he was able to put everything together for us. Shout like, out to Jill, man. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Jills from the Bronx. He's a Mexican dude. Uh, really, really humble. You guys will meet him at the at the film festival. Mm -hmm. He was able to keep it, keep track with all the actors, keep track with the with the with the crew, because I bro, I lost count, contact with everybody. Wow. And then you know, they were, they were some of the actors that they had different projects now. Mm -hmm. So now we had to, okay, let's shoot this scene. We don't have this actors, but let's shoot this way so we don't see them. And then when we bring them back, we shoot this way. It was a whole, like, like Baldwin was saying, like, so we had to adjust and kind of like improvise. He's not a, he doesn't really like to go that round, but it's like, yo, we got to do what we got to do. We have no other choice. So we had, all the schools were shut down. Um, so his character, he's in school, right? So... We couldn't shoot at any New York City school, Whoa. any New York City school. So we had to kind of like talk, take set. all of those scenes out and figure out how to shoot it outdoor somehow and make it happen that way. No, but you guys been through a journey because- That was my challenge as a director. I don't know if they want to share something. I was going to say, I'm not sure if you guys are familiar with the Mighty Ducks. It's yeah. a scene that he has like a, a, a quack call yeah, yeah, yeah. as he calls everybody back. Yeah, I was yeah, wondering yeah. if you had some sort of call. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that classic. classic scene. It's a classic. It's a classic <laughs> one. I remember that one. Yeah, well, one of the biggest struggles, man, there is such a thing as momentum. Mm -hmm. right. You know, especially when the state of mind thing is a real thing, you know? And that's why one day as an actor, your mindset is just right. You you got your soundtrack for for the character. Everything is just on point. And the next day, if something sways you, man, it could just throw that whole thing off. So to talk about the momentum that I was getting with my character and getting, getting the swing of things, you know, just to be aware, okay, I got this. I could do this, right? And to, once I got to know Saulo, the pandemic happens, right? So now we're dealing with just time and dealing with all the ugliness and everything that we have to deal with, mm -hmm. you know, at home, right? And to come back, I was a different person. Saulo, to me, I had to realize Saulo was a different person. And my whole outlook on Saulo was different. And at first it was a little difficult because I'm like, hey, man, how am I gonna approach this? But um, it ends up working out because there's a little bit of you in every character that you do. That was a struggle. 
um, until I found my footing. And I was like, you know what, let me just, you know, put myself in this. And what I went through in the pandemic was a blessing in disguise and it, and it helped give some depth to, to that character at the end of the day. It's just a pivot did it, you know? Wow. And again, just a great supporting team and these and guys made it easy. Like you mentioned like the character has something of you, like what qualities does the character? Yeah, sure, man. And so. And you can answer that same question. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, Saulo is not the nicest guy, right? He's the antagonist. But the thing is, and it's funny because the way the character was written, and God bless you because you gave me certain liberties to, to, to put myself into the character. The character was like up here. Like you said, he was like this gangster guy, right? And my thing was like, if this guy's always here, like are people gonna respect him because they already see him on the high, angry all the time. And my thing was, let me bring him down. Let me bring him to a place where a lot of us been that guy that usually hurt people. You kind of felt like that was your homie at some point, like that was your ally at one point. And I was like, let me humanize him a little bit. Let me have him make these guys feel like they have a safe space with this guy. And, but don't get it twisted. You know, he's a product of his environment right. and he's a savage. Well, that's and, really what you know? kind of saw when you yeah. spoke about your story. I have a very similar story that, mm -hmm. to yours. And um, it was like, you know, you found like an older brother kind of. Right. In that, was, that was the intent behind the way, what I was trying to bring to Saulo, mm -hmm. humanize him a little bit. But it's like, I wanted people to feel like, man, I kind of like this guy. He's kind of a big brother, but I don't feel comfortable liking him because that is wrong. Mm -hmm. Because he's evil at the end of the day, you know? Mm -hmm. So, you know, to, to have people feel uncomfortable is, is a good goal. You know like that. Yeah. 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 Right, yeah. right. So that was, yeah, that was my experience yeah, that's, with that's that character, you know? you know? So That's that experience. So, I mean, for me... Biggest struggle, I'll answer that one first. I was a sophomore in high school, mm. right? What was difficult was, was honestly balancing um, working in the movie and going to school at the same time mm. because there was a lot of late nights. There was a lot of, um, you know, I, I, staying up at 12 in the morning, I, I, 1 in the morning, I, I, 2 in the morning, and then having to wake up at 6. To go to school. Exactly, coming home and doing homework and then going back to school finishing right out of school, sometimes leaving early to go to set. And also just the process of aging throughout the, throughout the movie. Because like, like to piggyback off of uh, what Robel said, you change, mm. you know? And, and your outlook on things, it, it, it changes you as an actor as well because mm -hmm. there's certain qualities that you, that you felt when you were younger could be brought out more than how you feel now, mm. right? Things like that. Going off of like... Um, qualities that somebody sees inside of the character like within mm -hmm. yourself is something like a really big challenge of Manny for me personally was Manny is a good kid at heart right mm -hmm. like his essence is a good kid but he saw the life right he saw the life of you know the gang and all that stuff and all the money that was being made and he wanted to be part of that but when your essence is just good it's, you have to, you have to know how to transmit, like you're out of place, but he's still like his head wants it, but his, his body isn't that yeah. right. right. So you have to, in every single scene, you have to make it seem like he's out of place, regardless of if he's in like what his essence is because his mind is somewhere else mm -hmm. right. or where his mind is, but his essence is someone else. You know what I mean? Yep. Mm -hmm. So he has to feel out of place in absolutely everything. When he's talking to his parents, when he's talking to his mom, he has to feel like, right. I don't want to be here. Right. Right. When he's with Saulo, he has to feel like, I don't want to be here. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So that was the biggest challenge, at least personally for mm -hmm. me with Manny. Because it's like he's just, he's just constantly lost. He doesn't have a sense of direction of what he wants to do. He's not mm -hmm. too deep into the gang stuff. He's not too deep into school anymore. He's right. just like living it, you know, halfway through. Mm -hmm. And a lot so of that us was, go through that experience. And we, yes. go, we, go we don't through got no really. GPS that's yeah. like, Fast. what's your dream? What do you want to do when you grow up? And yeah. that's, that's, you know, that's what I, as the director, wanted to highlight. Uh, and if you see the cinematography of the film with his parents or with his family, we have a different mood, like different tones, um, warmer tones, like wider 
tones and whatnot. Well, you mean like with the filters, like with the yes, the color color wise, color wise, color wise. Yeah. Color -wise. So color when he's wise. with the gang or when he's outside, it highlights. It's more bluish tones. It's more darker tones. So you'll see that in the film, like it changes drastically depending on where he's at, and you know we kind of like wanted to show that like when he's home, the, you know we got more warmer warmer col colors and whatnot, mm -hmm. but. You know, as a like how, how he was saying, we go we go through that, bro. We go through that in life. We don't have a GPS like you were saying, and we had to figure it out. Yeah, so we don't get we don't get to ask the right question because sometimes even my mom, like I was driving her home earlier, and I was I was mad at her. You know what I'm saying? Because she although she means well and she wanted you know for me and whatnot, or for all of us like our parents, sometimes we don't want to hear it. Right. And. We don't want to hear and that's what it is we want to find yeah, out we, we, we want to find out the hard way, the hard way. You know? mm -hmm. like i told you so and like so, yeah so it's one of those it's a process yeah baldwin so wait so how was like when y'all was scouting for sets like mm -hmm. how, how you was like you know what i'm saying you had to get in the zone with the cameras and even like the whole wearing masks limits oh. on, on, on yeah, the amount like, of people scouting for sets uh, <laughs> in the perfect world you go scout take the time for that what we scouted like out of ten locations, we probably scouted like two, three, and then you know because of all the ups and downs and all the like you know it's just I guess you know being for us a really like learning experience. There's a lot of factors that go into making a film. Right. You know what I'm saying? And my part is just the DP, his part is the director. But especially when you're not that experienced, we were we're super experienced like shooting. Yeah, right. a whole lot of music videos, but with music videos, we could jump up and down, do this and that, and like, yo, there's just creativity. Oh, like at 100%. With right. films, you gotta like, you, you have to have a map. You have a story. Yeah, you have to stick. At the end of the day, the story is what matters, and you have to do whatever you can to chew for the story. Right. To piggyback on that, the beautiful thing is that we have built a relationship to the point where he trusts me to pick a location even if he hasn't seen it exactly because yeah. of all the work that we have that built done, and yeah. you know exactly put together right yeah, yeah so, like, you would know like mm -hmm. he's gonna love the set <laughs> like, exactly right. yeah and we had another friend of ours same thing we have the same relationship with broly he also dp the film as well oh yes then so we got two when, cinematographers exactly and he actually shot more of the film than i did because I couldn't be there because of the schedule. I was a full-time um, tech in Adorama. Uh, by the way, anybody who wants to become a good DP, I would recommend go to our rental house. You get to put your hands on all the good cameras. You get to know how to use them. You get to play with the toys. And that was a, that's, that's a blessing for my life. So a lot of the time, I had to schedule out, like ask for permission at work. And like I couldn't be there for a lot, a lot of the shoots. Wow. And uh, that was kind of like, ugh. Kudos to you, bro, because he will come out of work and do a eight, 12 hour shift with us and then and then go back to work. Having to go back yeah. to work. Well, that shows passion, like, you know? Yeah. And now y'all seen the results now. Wait, it's four years, right? Four yeah. years, uh, the process? Three, three, yeah. Years, yeah. three years. Three years yeah. total? Two, two years and you a got, half. You just said like two weeks like, later. You probably started like in January script. or something, yeah. 2020. Yeah, we started We started yeah. 2020. And I, I noticed that you have um some urban artists in the film. Can yes. you like speak so about we that? Got, we got Nelly Nels from the Bronx, uh, one of my brothers. Um, we went to uh, high school together, so we have a really good relationship, um, him and his brother. We got him on the opening scene and at the, uh, can I say it? Right at the end. It's and right at the end. Scene. The most two important scenes, he's there uh, with Salo. Uh, we also got Chaka, also from the Bronx. Uh, we got. He went to the same high school as me. That's why I pointed it out. Oh, where? Oh, that's what's up. That's what's up. Wait, so y'all yeah. went? Y'all went to the same school? Chaka and I went to oh, Columbus. Oh. What, what school was that? One? Columbus. Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, it's it's interesting. Like, although New York City feels very big, it's we know each small other. Small circle. Yeah, we it's, all know each small other. Small circle. It's a small circle. Like. They're saying like we see each other somewhere. Like, I don't know where it's at. People but. are creating content. You know, within you know early yeah. night. You know, the born. 80s, late 80s and 90s. Right. A lot of the con creators we, right now are, you know, we're coming up and we're, right. we're showing that we're here to create and we're here to stay and, you know, and we're here on the innovators then with uh, this amazing cast, right? Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Awesome. We got um, Brazil, uh, Brazil 21, uh, 
Yeah, yeah. Oh, he's, he's, in, he's, he's uh, Miami. He's in Miami, Miami now, but he's originally from New York. We went to the same high school as well. Um, got it. Who else do we got? Soundtracks, we got Nathaniel Perfetta from Dominican Republic. Um, what amazing. else? We got Briga. We got Briga from New Jersey. Uh, we got a couple of guys, couple of guys. That's dope. So wait, so y'all have uh, the the release? We man. got we got Adiel. Adiel is us. Yeah, yeah. You making music? He now? makes music. Yeah. Bro. Yo. He, makes music. <laughs> he, he has a soundtrack on the film as well. Oh, that's nice. dope. You yeah, see, yeah, yeah. that's with with another kid named. So you um, created Arbo. an opportunity to put your community, bro. Yeah, your, your friends and I'm family. Telling, and I'm like, telling all of these people, bro. You guys got to take advantage. Right. Mm -hmm. And right. once you get to where you guys got to get to, like, make sure you guys call me and write right. me that check. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, it takes one to know one, right? So um, right. that's how he mm -hmm. was able to point you out, right? So that's that's a blessing, you know. And talk so, wait, about like Friday. When Friday's the the screening, right? So when is it? Let's shout that out. So Friday, twenty second at ten fifteen. We are going to be on um, screening our... Union Square, right? Yeah, Union Square at the Regal, Regal Theater. Regal Theater. At the New York Latino Film Festival. Whoever wants to come out, you know, tickets online have sold out. Thanks to God, because he's the one that's making everything possible for us. Show up. They'll be selling tickets at the door. And it's, it's yeah, going to be... Yeah, we got to support our, be... our, 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 our community and the content that we're creating, you know, because... Yep. We always consuming what they put there for us, right? Right. But who's creating our content? Mm -hmm. Who's telling the point of view from our point of view? Right. Right. So that's mm -hmm. why we had to put the innovators then. So we like, there's people who are doing dope stuff that right. nobody's highlighting that they're from our community. Right. That's why we're here, and that's why you, bro, you guys are here. Yeah. You know? Thank you. Thank you we for having us here, that. bro. Thank you. Thank for you guys for coming. I appreciate it. It's an honor to have you guys again because you guys are our peers, you know. And thank as you, you know, we probably the same age. But we look up to to you guys, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Because you guys took the ch the time to say we have a project, we're working on it, we're gonna build it, and it's actually amazing. Like it's really, it's, it's like really you feel like the yeah. morning you guys, you, of yeah. our time for us. Let's you know, go, let's go. The Bronx from the hood, you know what I'm saying? While you and, guys, um, while you guys thought about the trailer, uh, oh, it's the incredible, amazing, bro. Like it'll, it'll be. Uh, like most people are gonna yeah. the thing that you guys didn't do that, and you guys did. Yep. You know what I'm saying? And that's amazing. <laughs> that's really amazing. How was uh, your relationships on set? Who was the best friends on set? And who was a clown and all that? I don't know if I did want to start with that. <laughs> I guess the clown was definitely the guy that plays, plays Lou. I think. <laughs> Giancarlo, yeah, Giancarlo. Yo, Giancarlo. <laughs> Giancarlo. Yo, that guy is hilarious, yeah, bro. That guy is funny. Yo, he's hilarious. He's just yeah. naturally like that. He's yeah. Yeah, but that's the thing. It's, it's not. It's, he's, it's, it's not his character. It's just him. No, this is the thing. We specifically wrote that character thinking of him. Got it. That's crazy. So yeah, that's what he's playing. Like that. That's himself on, that's on real life. On the, that, that's fine. Yeah, no, I got. That's the one that comes out on the trailer. I think it is. Fiesta Fea. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, so wait, this is an international movie at the end of the day, right? Because right. you guys are, are more bilingual, speaking bilingual right, right. in the movie, right? So right, right. Spanish and English, but you, go ahead. Yeah, to me, that was very important because I wanted to make sure to highlight us, our culture here in, in New York. In New or York in, in or in even the United States, how, you know, we do the, the, this whole Spanglish thing that, you know, within one, the same conversation, we f go from English to Spanish and right. we'll understand each other and whatnot. Right. Mm -hmm. And it's interesting because the guy that did the print for the film, the DCP file, they're from here, New York, Blanquitos, no sé si uno Blanquito ahí, some white folks. <laughs> and, bro, they, the first thing that they told me is like, whoa, we never, we never seen this this way. Level of work. like Level of work. How you guys go from Spanish to English like that. And just, that's how we really talk. Right. Mm -hmm. That's how we talk. It's that's, normal for us. It's normal for us. Yeah. <laughs> and, and the crazy thing is that we understand each other. Yeah. Yep. But if you see other films, like the way they try to do it, they don't do it that how we... But we Did speak it. like in New York, like if you Spanish, either Puerto Rican, Dominican, you know, right. Cuban, like we all get the lingo. Like right. everybody gets that. It's like its own language right mm -hmm. here. Yeah. You know, yep. from Dykeman through. <laughs> yeah. Bro, I think we're going to have to come up with our own dictionary or something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, for sure. Now, nah, but I think this movie is going to take some legs and it's going to like, you know, make an impact in our community. Thank you. Um, thank you. In, in the Latin community and in, in the world, you know, itself, you know, because. 
it, it, it has a message that everybody has experienced, mm -hmm, but at mm -hmm. the same time, listen to the name, something of value, something of value. you know, and like that says it all. And that's a quote in itself. So, right. you know, y'all brought the value to the something, right. You know, wow. <laughs> that's a good way of putting it. I think you're going to say something, right? I mean, no, nah, I was. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, no, he's no. ready to act, bro. He's an actor now. I was just, I was thinking he's about ready. like, cause I was, I was not nah, funny enough. All right. I was just like, right now when you brought up the question of like, uh, how was it on set yeah. and stuff? Like you, you started to like, you, you reawakened a bunch of memories. memories. Yeah. yeah. Like, uh, there's a whole bunch of things that, things that happened that I didn't. Yeah. There Remember when the, things. when the cops show up? On Yo, set. Oh, nah, yeah. You could, you could <laughs> yeah, talk on that. Like that. You could talk on that. Yo, there, no, there was a lot. So, me neither. I, I, no, it was right after I had left that the cops showed up. So it, they were they were filming. It was the scene of like the the robbery. The robbery. So right? we, we we got props. Prop guns and everything. In the middle of the Bronx with you know guns. <laughs> yeah. The East Bronx. Yeah. And then they, they, the, the cops just showed up, man. <laughs> they thought it was for real. Oh, I'm a, I, I'm they were pointing on us, Azer and everything, yeah. bro. Yeah. Yeah. It was like another action scene on top of the movie. You, you were there. You were wow. There. God, yeah. man, that's crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. That's Literally, you, so. you were there? Yeah, I was directing the film. <laughs> and I had to come out like, it's a movie. It's a movie. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, so, so this is what happened. Oh, so <laughs> there was already that's a couple crazy. shootings that were happening that day. So the cops were already like on alert. And high alert. And someone called it in. There's a bunch of guys I mean, I hate with that masks and guns <laughs> looking out the in front window. of this business, <laughs> you know. So the cops show up, and thank God for the women. I always say like, thank God for the women in my life, but thank God truly for the women that were there, because the cops hearing the women say it's a movie, it's a movie, kind of let them put their guards down. Because when they hear a bunch of guys, the guys with the mask on, they don't care what you, yeah. what you got to say. Yeah, they're not so even hearing. So it saying. was crazy. But, you know, the struggles are what you go through trying to make things happen, mm -hmm. you know, with the cars that you're dealt, right? But thank God everybody was okay. Um, yeah, I mean, some people didn't. They were all Dominicans, by the way. What, the cops? <laughs> the cops. Yeah. We, <laughs> no, were literally, shooting, we were shooting another scene and the same cops the show, show up. Anyway. And they were like, yo, why you guys don't, don't tell us that yeah. you guys are bringing guns to the Bronx? It's yeah. like, bro, like, we inside. Like, we don't know. Like. <laughs> no, the other crazy thing, too, I remember when the cop, dude, they had lasers and everything. Yeah. Pointed. One of the cops said, thank God. Like, yeah. when we said it's a movie and they realized what it was, like, thank God. Because it could have gone left. No, because it, it, yeah. it's yeah. still. Yeah. It's easy. Easy. Of course, easy. they don't, they don't want to deal with that. And with somebody like Giancarlo, you look at him, he looks like... He's a threat, you know? <laughs> You'll see him when you see the movie, like, oh, yeah, they see him. He's like, oh, watch out, you know? But, man, bless. Things like that you will forever, yeah. you know, keep with you. You can it's make that up, you know? Sure. Uh, well, it's crazy uh, how, like, you know, in film, when you make a movie, it's, it's a whole, like, experience, right? Like a living yeah. experience that the whole team, the set, the director, like, it's a whole world that happens, and then a movie released, and then the world sees the bare minimum of yep. the whole thing, yeah. you know? Yeah. All these other things happening behind the scenes. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. I'm so proud of you guys. <laughs> you know, it's awesome. you. you know, it's amazing. Yeah. Uh, there, there were a lot of moments when we could have just stopped. As actors, like, oh man, I'm not gonna go forward. People, production, right. and the people that follow through. I, I always say it, man, you, you gotta show up. There is a, a, a reward for those people that show up and the people that finish right. the finish mm -hmm. line. Everyone that's here, I'm so proud of everyone that finished the project, because not everyone that started and finished with us. That same day, some people that were working on the set, yeah. they didn't finish the movie. Yep. Mm. That's okay, God bless you. But the ones that finished that project and had the vision that we had, there's a reward for that. Right. Today, yeah. there's that movie, Something of Value, is there's a value behind it right. that you all gained by being part of the movie, you right. know what I mean? Uh, so we appreciate you guys showing your artistic view and your point of view um, in this movie. You know what I mean? We One thing, can you guys speak about like the, uh, when is it going to be released or the screening and uh, where to find it on social media, stuff like that. And also your social medias as well so people can actually fi find yeah, it. Yeah, that's highlight like all the social media. Yeah, so my social media is my name, Yaniel, and last name, Yaniel Paulino. It's Y-A-N-I-E-L-P-A-U-L-I-N-O. And, and the award winner. <laughs> and the Instagrams, 
Um, no, so my name is just Robel underscore uh, Luan. And uh, my Instagram is Adiel. So A D I E L underscore Bendecido. Beautiful. Mine's is um, my name, Baldwin, Baldwin Fall, like F U L. So Baldwin and then just at, at F U L, Baldwin Fall. Right. Yeah. And I know it. the movie has an Instagram too. It's Algo de. Yes, Algo de, what a D, de valor. Algo, algo de, de valor. valor. But the, the movie is called Something, something of Value. Something yeah. yeah. So they got it in Spanish and English. That's right, also right. cool. Originally, we wanted everything in Spanish, but when you see the whole film, it's more English than Spanish. So that's right. why we. But it could, it. I think it hits a bigger demographic. And then right. when the people in Spanish, get it like it's mm -hmm. just a bonus like you know what I mean right, that's right. awesome and then yeah. the screening is on the 22nd the screening is on 22nd with the film festival with the film festival New York Latino Film Festival at 10 15 p.m. kind of like red carpet mingling starts at 9 p.m. so if you haven't bought your ticket they have sold out online show up to the to the to the theater they're gonna be selling the tickets at, at the door um, just make sure you get there um, early and whatnot and we're just looking forward to have a beautiful time. And you will, and you have having it, man. And you, these guys are on a press run right now. That's why they're here. Um, <laughs> so one more thing. It's going to be released a year from... This is going to be so, so, in a year. Yeah, so what happened... Direct, it's going to be direct to the consumer, like online, like from yes, website? Yes, yes, yes. Like from your own website? So, no, so what happens is that most of the films, they go through a film festival, what we call like a film festival route. Right. So it takes like, you know, six months, eight months, visiting you know different cities uh different film festivals you know to bring awareness of the film and whatnot so after that it's up to you know whenever we decide that we want to put it out there but it's coming out on um, most of the theaters in um dominican republic uh next year for sure they wanted they wanted us to bring it out release it this year because you know next year they have the whole um presidency um candidate going on and whatnot right. mm -hmm. but i'm like yo this year is for us to enjoy the film and the film festival around so Let's not, let's leave everything in God's time and let things roll out the way they got to roll out. We're trying to see what platforms um, license the film right now as well. So we don't want to rush things, you know, um, we took our time to film it. So now we want to take our time to make sure that we make the right decisions. The marketing campaign. Oh, we could talk about something behind the scenes. <laughs> we got some stuff we could throw your way. Another thing is before we go, I want to get some insight for the people who are watching who might want to be a director, what's two, three things you would recommend for somebody who's watching, right. who want to be in the film and directing, like where should they start? School, get, grab a camera, like what? So, so, so what I say right now, your phone is the best place to start. Get you yourself an iPhone or whatever phone you, got it, you could get your hands on is the best way to start. As a director, I will start learning um, frames so that you know how to talk to your cinematographer. Okay, this is the frame that I want. Um, when it comes to a close-up, when it comes to the uh, rule of thirds, when it comes to like medium shots, um, wide shots. And when it comes to directing your actors, you don't necessarily need to go to school for that. Um, there's a whole bunch of books that you could buy. Uh, that's how I got introduced into the industry, honestly. But there's courses that you could take like five weeks courses and whatnot here in New York City and a whole bunch of places. So just do that and everything that you learn online. I mean, you got YouTube right now. Right. <laughs> but everything comes on, you know, by experimenting, like right. shoot with your friends, like try to guide mm -hmm. them, direct them, see how it works, how it doesn't work. Put yourself in front of the camera, right. like try feeling uncomfortable. That's what, what that's what an actor goes through. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because when you on set, you got like 20, 20 heads in there and it's just one actor. And the camera's just pointing at him, so. Mm -hmm. So, Baldwin, you say the same for cinematographer. What are the yeah. few things you would give to a up-and-coming cinematographer yeah. who want to get into the industry? Yeah, I'll oh. say. I'll say. Hold B. on, Yanier, what you Yeah. Say? Also, you don't, as a director, you don't necessarily need to know it all. That's why you bring us a, a cinematographer. Got That's it. why you bring an actor. That's why you bring a sound guy. But it's always good to know a little bit about everything. Right. Like me, mm -hmm. I'm a very experienced um, director that knows editing, that knows um, cinematography, that knows you know how acting you know works and whatnot, what it feels to be in front of the camera and whatnot, uh, how the lighting is supposed to look. So that's you know when you're talking to all of your crew members um, or you know actors, you have an idea of okay, I don't know how this is going to work out, but this is 
kind of like where I want us to go and whatnot. I'm going to go to your class. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, people been asking me, to be honest. Yeah. There you go. Uh, yes. Baldwin, what's up? Let's see, yeah. what, what would you say for a cinematographer? Right. Um, I would say the first thing is, like, be intentional with your, like, learning. And that means, like, if you really want to go the DP route, be intentional with that. I mean, like... You have to know that that's what you want to do. There's a lot of like routes in the filmmaking industry and a lot of people that have no experience, they think that they want to be a director. That's like usually a really a stereotypical thing that people think, oh, you know, is that director? And they think the director does everything. And it's like, just know that that's what you want to do. Like, first of all, like, you know, if it's, if it's DP, what we do is mainly um, well, lighting and camera yeah 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 exactly so what we do is mating like main like lighting director dp is a director of photography or um cinematographer same thing different names right <laughs> all, all that we do is pretty much lighting and camera work and pretty much we're the right hand man of the director mm -hmm. he has the vision we're here to execute that vision technically Excellent. with uh, selection of camera lenses lighting lighting temperature colors you know haze whatever you want to like Everything technically. I say be intentional because a lot of dudes nowadays, um, yes, you can learn a lot of stuff in YouTube and I cannot pr probably like select a few channels. It's just who you learn it from. Right. You have to be pretty good at learning. I think that's one of my greatest, like I could, I, like, I'm good at learning. I will not just like learn from the best. Like if you watch the films, okay, what films have uh, gained um, cinematography awards? Okay, watch that. You know, right. I'm, I'm not going to learn from a YouTube guy who has, a few followers, but then like, you know, are you good at lighting? I want to see your lighting. So just be selective with your learning. Um, Chatdeck.com is a really great, great place to go. You see like a whole bunch of frames there. Um, it's like a whole bunch of movies and like a whole bunch of frames that you can choose and see lighting. But it's not that hard. You can like, if you at zero, you can learn everything within a few months and try to put into practice whatever you learn. Thank but, you. Um, Thank yeah. you, Walden. Yeah. So, uh, Dan you guys? and Robus, uh, yeah. what would you guys say for, uh, for an actor? You know, that's right. watching this. That's like, hey, aspiring to be an actor. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, no, for actors, it's just put yourself out there. You know, like just take that first step. It's always that. It's always that. Be confident in who you are, because at the end of the day, what acting comes down to is who you are as an individual. Mm -hmm. We're playing roles, but remember that we're the we're the we're the embodiment of those roles. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, we're we're the ones who are bringing the character out to light. Yeah, so it's literally. Medium. Yeah, it's literally just, you know, knowing who you are yeah. and putting yourself out there, taking the taking the um, the initiative to get up, you know, and put yourself in front of those in front of the camera, stuff like that. Beautiful. That's the that's the most important thing I could I could say. And, you know, just learning your craft, you know, listen to these actors who, who again, like 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 uh, Baldwin said, you know, who've proved them, proved themselves, right. you know what they say in terms of learning a character, what techniques they use in order for, you know, in order to bring that character out, in order to bring those certain traits that they want to bring out, um, things like that, you know. What is, give me one or two, three actors that if you look for reference at. Man, Joaquin that's Phoenix. A good one. Yes, Ooh, good one. Yeah, top, top yeah, of the yeah, 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 that's, that's, that's a good one. one. That, man is, that man is. Yeah, the way yeah. he embodied on um, the Joker. Yeah, yeah the that, Joker, that, he did I was hearing job. stories about that. I was like, wow, it, yeah, it's, it's incredible. Because it, it, it goes to show how like, the drama into it. You can do subtle things that mean so much more right. than just like acting crazy. And it's just like techniques that those people use. Who else? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm in love with, I, I spoke to Robel about this. I'm in love with people who played, who played the Joker in general. Cause, right. that, cause that's such a, yeah. that's such a great, a great Heath Ledger character. Did a, you know, did a Heath major. Ledger. He was Heath huge. Ledger. Yeah. Peace. Absolute unit, yeah. absolute unit. Cool. Um, and Daniel, for you, uh, give me two directors that you've looked at as for insight, for uh, inspiration. So, so to me, um, I like a lot Alfonso Cuaron. Uh -huh. um, I like also Alejandro uh, Iranyutu, I think his name. He, he was the guy that directed The Revenant, which oh, made um, this guy win an award. Um, what's this called? Uh, Leonardo. Leonardo DiCaprio. Yep. Right. So those are kind of like um, two Spanish directors that I, I, I look forward to, to seeing his work, um, seeing their work. I mean, my top, I say this, I don't necessarily have like favorite directors, but I like- I mean, you're the best. I right? like you're good the best movies. I, know. I like good movies from certain directors. So you got Martin Scorsese, yes. uh, one of my top films from him is um, The Shutter Island. 
I seen yeah, that, that film. Yeah. I seen that film like the, 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 yeah. the same yeah, day. The crazy. same day I saw that film like four times. That same film, the the, the same day. Um, what? Uh, who else? Um, there's a whole there's a whole bunch. There's of a them. whole bunch, but yeah. yo, I just wanted to make sure we could highlight that uh, for the people. Um, How about you, Robo? Like, Robo, yeah, so, does that get your point of view? So I wanted to say this. I wanted to add to what you were saying when you were speaking about you know your whole process. As an actor, I'm giving you the other side. I appreciate a man like this. A lot of people may not know, but he started off as an actor. Okay? Mm. A lot of people don't know this, right? We got the inside I, scoop I, I, at the innovators, then everybody. I have to put you out there. On YouTube. <laughs> I have to put you out there. And, and this is the thing. I say that to say this. He understands the process of an actor, you know? And that's why he was... I guess that's why he was able to see my potential and what I could bring, right? It doesn't take someone very long. You could just have a conversation with someone and be like, he's the one, right? But because he knows the process as an actor, um, that's why he was able to make it so easy for me, I can say, and I can, I'm sure everyone else, the other actors, he made it so easy, and, and he made us dig a little deeper, man, you know? So he made that process a lot easier. And I've never met anybody so patient and graceful and as this man on set. Thanks. Seriously. I, Let's go, man. You Let's know, give him a high, well, round I, of this, applause, everybody. Serious, Let's no, go. No, seriously. Man. <laughs> you know, we were mentioning, uh, you know, Scorsese. I love the fact that he's getting his flowers while he's alive. I love this, this movement that's happening right now. We're not waiting until they're, they've mm -hmm. transitioned. Right. And... You know, we got to give our greats their flowers while they're here. You know what and I mean? The crazy thing about that, you mentioned that of Martin Scorsese. When I saw the trailer, mm. that was the reference of director that I was like, wow, like, yeah, man. that's wow. like what that's I got. Like, I'm yeah. like, yo, and this guy's from like our neighborhood. This sure. guy's Dominican. This guy's yeah. from our community. Wow, we all need to support it. Everybody, I need to support this movie. If y'all don't go to the showing, go follow their their social media, support their work, and um, a follow, a tag, a a, a like is not gonna hurt. A share, like, a comment, <laughs> a share. share, everything helps. Yeah. A conversation. Yeah. Just, yeah. just yeah. I, I love. I'm all about nostalgia, man. Just old school one on one interaction with people. I might not be. Everybody knows I'm not the best at social media. But I live for human interaction and right. for people to just tell someone else about this project and how this is. And this is the thing. I think, and not to like hog on the, you know, no, take I, over the mic. This is what we're here for. But, man, we've been holding on to this for so long, you know. Mm -hmm. And we'll be selfish to keep it to ourselves, right? Imagine that. You guys fought four years with it, like, under holding on to that. knows. And it's Can't, like right. a secret that yeah. only no, y'all know. Bro. Yep. That's crazy. It must so, be. Everybody calling me, DMing me, everybody. messaging me. Like, yo, when is this coming out? When is this? Like, yo, guys, hold on, hold on. I'm still <laughs> editing. <laughs> no, because you know what it is? Uh, when you got investors involved, like, you got to go with their pace. Yeah. So mm -hmm. it's not what I want to do. It's like, okay. Uh, what they want to do you know it's a, it's a totally different ball game right Got it. yeah but what i wanted to just say about the film i've noticed that the films that i'm passionate about that are crazy and that usually just get me are the ones that you put they get you to put your guards down right they a lot of korean films i'm a big fan of korean mm -hmm. films japanese films but if you notice in, in uh for example korean films have Especially you seen the, the 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 Seven Samurai. Uh, I think they shot it in nineteen something. The Japanese film. The Japanese. Hundred percent. You know, so the thing that these movies do is they get you to put your guards down. Okay, if it's a horror film, they hit you with the corny horror mm -hmm. stuff. You think you got them all figured out. Little do you know, there's a twist at the end, and yeah. you never saw that coming. You know, and with this film, you look at the trailer. A lot of films, you see the trailer, and the best parts of the movie are in the trailer. The trailer. Yeah. Well, there you got a big surprise coming when you see this movie. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Because there's a lot more to it than Let's just the go. trailer. Oh, right. I'm excited. Yeah. <laughs> Seriously. And this is what I got to say. I, just like these Korean films and these directors that that figured out, okay, is like Lots. I'm gonna give you what you think what it is, but then there's a twist. You think you're looking at a action film. But little do you know, there is a story growing within that film. And that's, you know, where you see something of value. You know, something of value kind of contradicts this action film. But when you, the deeper you get into it, it just grips you. 
you know, and you put your guards down thinking it's just an action film and there's so much more to it. And I'm just super happy and, and privileged to be part of this and, no, and you guys look forward to working job. with all of you guys again soon. You guys did an amazing job and it's, you know, it's yeah. time to, you know, let's give you your flowers now, you know what I mean? And thank you guys for, you know, putting your effort, you know, and putting thank it you, together and getting the job done. And you know? being here. Thank you guys for coming. And thank, right. you, thank you for, for having us. Thank Innovators you for having Den. us. Um, so, guys, we got another episode of the Innovators Den. We got formerly known as Hashtags. We got Yaniel pa uh, Paulino, right? Yes. And um, we got the team, the cast. And uh, thank you again. Don't forget to subscribe, follow, share. Like, share. Um, uh, all that. And all that. All right? It's a wrap. Innovators Den. Hey!